In this video we're going to look at amplitude modulation or for short AM. Amplitude modulation is one type of analog modulation. You'll recall from the last video that analog modulation had two main types continuous wave modulation and pulse analog modulation. And amplitude modulation is the first type of modulation that we're going to look at in the continuous wave modulation category. It is one of the first type of types of modulation discovered, first used in the early 1900s uh, with vacuum tube circuits. AM radio became widespread around 1920 and continues to be used up until the present day. It is very simple, but the quality is difficult to control. There's different types of amplitude modulation. Large carrier amplitude modulation, which is the simplest of all. Uh, in, in specifically, it uses a very simple circuit to demodulate the signal. And that's one of the reasons it was used in early AM radio and is still used today. It makes the cost of building a radio receiver very low. And of course that's what we needed back in the 1920s. Another type of amplitude modulation is double sideband suppressed carrier, uh, which requires a more complex circuit. And this is used in amateur radio and various other applications. And then there's another type called vestigial sideband, or VSB, and that's used in the old analog TV broadcasting, which we no longer use in Australia. We now use digital video broadcasting, uh, and we'll, we'll cover that in a later video. The last type of amplitude modulation is single sideband, which is by far the most complex to both transmit and receive, but it is also the most efficient. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's have a look at large carrier AM, um, and we're going to talk about this one in a bit of detail since it's the most commonly used. Now you can generate large carrier AM using this block diagram at the top here. So what we basically do is we take the message signal that we want to transmit, let's say that's speech or whatever it is. In the case of radio, that would be speech or sound. So we, we have this signal here, M of T, the message signal. We multiply that by some gain constant uh, just to uh, make sure that it's within certain limits. And then we add DC to that and what the effect of that has is it takes this signal M of T and it shifts it upwards in terms of amplitude. So it makes it all positive so that none of it goes below the uh, x-axis. And then we simply take that uh, that scaled message signal shifted by DC and we multiply that with the carrier signal. So we simply, you can see here, here's the scaled message signal shifted upwards and it's multiplied by the carrier and we end up with this modulated, amplitude modulated signal here. Now depending on the value of Ka and the value of AC um, we get what's called the modulation index and if the modulation index is below one we end up with this kind of situation where the envelope of the signal is always above the x-axis. But we can have uh, a case where the modulation index is greater than one and that's where the envelope dips below the axis and we end up with these phase reversals. Now we don't want to do that when we when we try to use an envelope detector because now you can see that the envelope of the signal no longer follows the original message signal. So for, for um, simple uh, 
AM radio broadcasting, we always have to make sure the modulation index is below one. But if we are using an application where we can use what's called a coherent detector, a bit more complicated, uh, then we can use a modula modulation index greater than one. So that's our block diagram for generating uh, large carrier AM. And if we look at it in terms of the frequency domain, this is in the time domain. If we look at it in the frequency domain, which you'll recall from a previous video, let's say this happens to be the bandwidth of the message signal, and it's confined between uh, minus W and W. Now, because this is a baseband signal, the bandwidth is just W from 0 to W. And that's just by definition. The spectrum or the time, uh, frequency domain version of the modulated signal is, remember, modulation is simply taking the baseband waveform and shifting it up towards the carrier. But don't forget, in this case, we've added the DC component, so that would just be a large spike here at zero frequency. DC is just zero frequency. So we've got our large spike here at um, uh, the carrier frequency once we shift it, and then we've got our message signal. So you can see we've got the upper sideband and the lower sideband, and now the bandwidth of the signal is now 2W. 2W. So AM, in this case, uh, what we call double side brand, uh, is the bandwidth is twice that of the original message signal. So AM is a little bit wasteful, or can be a bit wasteful, of bandwidth, and bandwidth is a very precious commodity in telecommunications. There's two things that we generally always trade off in a telecommunications system, and that is power and bandwidth. And large carrier AM is wasteful of both of those. Um, it's It's got twice the bandwidth and it uses a large amount of power in the transmission of the carrier signal. But what we're doing there is we're trading off those things with the simplicity or lack of complexity required in the demodulator. Let's have a look at the demodulator now. Um, a demodulator can be uh, not, sorry, large carrier AM can be non-coherently demodulated using a very, very simple envelope detector circuit shown here, as long as the modulation index mu is less than one. So just by putting the um, received signal through a diode and then through a smoothing circuit, which is this resistor and capacitor here, there's different ways of building that smoothing circuit, we get the original message signal out. Now, in, in, a, in, a, in actual fact, the message signal would be shifted uh, in, in terms of the uh, vertical axis we, with DC. It would still have a DC offset, but we can simply put another capacitor in here and remove the DC. So what the effect of this is, is if this is our um, modulated signal here, the black one, the envelope detector circuit as shown here would produce this red signal here. So it would simply follow the outline of the envelope of the signal. So that's how um, we um, use a very simple circuit to detect AM. You can actually build yourself one of these at home. It's very simple. Um, large carry AM unfortunately is wasteful of power. Only 33% or less of the transmitted um, power is information bearing. The bulk of the power is actually in the carrier signal. So remember I said that large carrier AM was wasteful both in terms of bandwidth and power. Yes it is, but uh, it's also the reason that we're doing that is we're trading off those things for simplicity in the receiver circuit. Now you've got to appreciate that way back in 1920 or earlier when we didn't have access to electronics and so on um, that it was actually even with uh, vacuum tubes it was kind of quite difficult to uh, and expensive still to build a simple circuit like this so that was the decision that was made uh, back then but we still use large carry AM even today even though we don't necessarily use a circuit like this in modern 
radios. I mentioned there's other forms of amplitude modulation. There's double sideband suppressed carrier. And that's the same as large carrier AM, but without the actual carrier present. Now that is much more power efficient. 100% of the power goes into the um, information bearing component of the signal, but it must be demodulated coherently. And what that means is we need to have a circuit which recovers the carrier signal and then uses that to demodulate at the receiver. But it still uses the same bandwidth as large carrier AM, hence the name double sideband. The next type of amplitude modulation, single sideband, is more complex again, but only uses half the bandwidth. So the bandwidth for single sideband is just W. Vestigial sideband is somewhere in between DSB and SSB. So it uses um, somewhere between W and 2W of the bandwidth. Um, and um, it's kind of a compromise type situation. And in fact, all of those particular um, forms of modulation must be demodulated coherently. Now, one of the problems with amplitude modulation is the quality. They have the lowest quality of all modulation systems, and that's because noise and interference, which come into the transmission and reception process, greatly affect the amplitude of a signal. And if we add noise to an amplitude modulated signal, then all of that noise is replicated in the demodulated signal. So you can appreciate any noise that affects the amplitude of a amplitude modulated signal. The envelope detector is simply going to um, think that that's the message signal and it's going to reproduce the noise at the output. So any form of noise that happens along the way of an AM radio broadcast will find its way into the output and that's quite annoying and results in uh, poor quality. So to overcome this we can use different types of modulation and we're going to look at those next. Frequency and phase modulation are not as affected by noise and interference and hence have a higher quality. Now you can actually hear this if you go and listen to AM radio and then you go and listen to FM radio you'll actually notice quite a big difference in the um, in the in the quality. But there are other um, advantages and disadvantages to FM and we'll talk about those in the next video.